Thank you. 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 Thank you.
where we don't have immunization kits, okay? So they lack this type of uh, information, but if they had this information, the, the assumption is that they have the ability to, to operate on, on that information and maybe discipline the teachers and the nurses, okay? Citizens in the rural villages, they have local knowledge. They know which teacher doesn't show up. Uh, but trying to organize the community to monitor and supervise these, these uh, frontline service provider directly is costly. It, it, it runs into these like uh, a big collective action problems. And the, and the problem is, is like th this idea that if I'm going to challenge the nurse, if I'm going to challenge the teacher, there might be, there might be uh, implications. So the, the nurse might not treat my, my son the next time. The, the teacher might fail my, my student, not recommend that he advances to, to second grade. And so people, everyone prefers that other people will monitor and will confront the, the teachers, but not them. So they don't do that, okay? And they also are afraid to, the, there's also implications to go and reporting it to the district because the district is far sometimes 30, 40 miles away, and, and going uh, to the district is costly both in time and money, okay? So we in this, like, this problem of like this weak communication channels between, the citizens have the information, but they're reluctant to operate on that, and the district can operate on, on the information, but they don't necessarily have this information, okay? So we have this, this problem in which citizens are not reporting, they know that the district doesn't have accurate information. So the expectation from the district is very low. The district knows that the people know that they don't have accurate information and have low expectations, so they don't have a lot of incentive to try and go out and really like seek out this information. So with this, we're in this equilibrium where people don't report, government doesn't seek a lot of information, and quality of services is very low. If you go to a school and you do an unexpected audit in Uganda, uh, uh, in, in a school, uh, uh, around 30% of teachers are missing. If you go to a health clinic, around 25% of the personnel are not there. That's, that's to give you a sense of, of what we're talking about. So where do ICT come into the, 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 the picture? The idea is that if we can create a platform that enables citizens to use their local knowledge and make a complaint that is anonymous, free, doesn't take living in a house, okay? Um, then we can reduce significantly the cost of, the, of, of, of community monitoring, okay? So the collective action problem is reduced because I don't have to reveal my identity. I don't have to travel 40 miles to the district, okay? So the idea is they can make these complaints. But here's the, here's, the, here's the trick. Not only I have now lower cost of making these complaints, if I do make these complaints, the district now has this information. I know that they have this information, so my expectations are higher. The district official know, it's not only that they know the, uh, the, uh, the, the problems, they also know that I know that they have this information. So by creating this, this common knowledge, uh, the expectation is that they will have a greater incentive to act upon this information, okay? So in a world in which we have a problem, the citizen will report the problem through the system the district will respond because it has the ability and it has now greater will, and the problem will be resolved, okay? So in this project, we're gonna be looking at two questions. One question we're looking at is, when the district gets these messages, do they respond and do citizens have higher quality of, of, of services in education, in water access, in, in, in health? But before we even look at that, this is all conditional on the fact that people actually use the system, okay? If people are not using the system, nothing will change. And it turns out that when we implement this system and we've implemented similar things uh, uh, in Uganda, there's a, there's, a, there's a study that implemented a corruption reporting system in, in Nigeria, we see uh, relatively low uptake, but we also see a lot of variation in uptake, both between individuals and between villages. So what we are interested in, in into investigating uh, why uh, why do we see this variation? What can explain this variation in uptake of, of a system that is free, anonymous, and, and potentially can, can, can have significant welfare implication to individuals? Okay, so this is the goal of, of our study. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna uh, describe in some greater detail the, the, the project that we implemented in Uganda, 
I'll, I'll demonstrate that there's nice variation, I'll give you the design, and we'll go to some, some results. Now, the, the, we, we haven't written a paper yet. This is the, I'm gonna show uh, very preliminary results of this study, and very much looking forward to, to comments and, 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 and question of, of different directions that we can, we can take this, okay? So, so let's go into the, uh, the project. Uh, the project is implemented in one district in, in Uganda, uh, in West Nile, uh, uh, Ahua district. Uh, there's about 750,000 people living there. It's, uh, uh, and, and it's close to the border here with Sudan and, and, uh, and the Congo. And it's a relatively poor district also compared to other districts in Uganda, okay? Um, the, 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 the study in Ahua uh, as I said, was implemented as a, as a field experiment. We took the, the district and we created clusters of villages based on health centers. So there are 48 health centers in Ahua district. So these are the, the black dots are the health centers. And what we did is we, 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 we created a cluster uh, around each health center of the villages that this health center uh, services, okay? And we took these 48 uh, uh, um, clusters and we randomly assigned 24 to treatment and 24 to control. So the yellow is the, is the treatment and the, the blue clusters are the control. And there's around 100 villages in treatment and control, okay? Uh, in terms of the activities that we did, so we partnered with this Ugandan NGO. We worked with them very closely to develop the, the, the platform and implement it in the district. The platform is relatively I, I, I want to say it's relatively sophisticated, but I'm in a room that people will be like, where we do that uh, uh, for before breakfast. Uh, but, but it's relatively sophisticated in the sense that it provides anonymity for, for people. So when people send a text message, it opens at the, the district uh, uh, headquarters. So we, we put uh, tablets in the health, uh, district health office, the district education office, the water office. It opens as they have a dashboard and it opens as a case, okay, where they can manage the case. Uh, they can, uh, they can uh, uh, do queries of like number of messages that come in, different topic over time. But they can also manage the case in the sense that they can respond to, to messages through the system uh, where at, at no stage they know the identity of, of uh, the person sending messages. And the messages are sent to a, a short code and they're free. Uh, we had to train the district official on how to log into the dashboard and, and how to respond to messages. Uh, the NGO also organized community meetings in which they introduced the platform, okay? But not only they, they had a meeting, uh, initial meeting to introduce the platform and the service and explain how it works, there were also quarterly meetings where district officials came and said, okay, from this cluster, these are the messages that came in. This is what we did, this is what we didn't do. This is our responsibility. This message is something that is not in our responsibility. This is the national government. But by doing that, the idea was to create this common knowledge that we discussed before that is important, okay? Um, there was also uh, uh, a registration of people into a service uh, where, where uh, the NGO was sending weekly text messages with po small poll questions about like, hey, do you have access to water, uh, uh, et cetera. Okay, so this is kind of the, 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 main, uh, 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 the main intervention where, uh, as I said, 100 villages have access to this, to this platform, okay? And this is how a community meeting looks. This is uh, the NGO comes and just explains, these are representatives of the NGO and explains what's the platform, how you use it, uh, um, and, and et cetera. Okay. okay, so just look at just basically, uh, basic up uptake. Uh, so what we see here at the, from, from the inception of the program, uh, running uh, about a year, year and a half, uh, the red is all messages coming in. These are all incoming text messages. The, the green are what we call relevant messages. Uh, some of the messages that come in are not very relevant to service provision, and the blue are actionable, okay? So just to get a sense of what is a, what is a non-relevant, what is a relevant, and what is an actionable message, uh, not relevant is, hey, uh, we are for election. There's a lot of like, you know, uh, messages that, you know, there's not much that you can do with. Relevant is something like the tobacco farmers are miserable, how can you help, okay? It's relevant in the sense that they understand that this is about service provision, uh, but, but it's not actionable. It's not something that the district can say, okay, I can discipline this teacher, or I can discipline that nurse, or I can send immunization kits here, and I can send bed nets there, okay? These are more actionable. The, the borehole in this village is broken, okay? These nurses, they don't, in this village, they don't attend to, you know, to, to patients, okay? Uh, 
In terms of variation, if we look at it by cluster, here we just took the actionable messages over a year's period. We can see we have these 24 clusters. We can see that there's quite significant variation between the clusters. Some clusters, <coughs> we see almost no messages coming in, and some clusters, we see quite a bunch. Okay? Uh, if we break it by the villages, so we have 100 villages. Again, we see this like large variation. Okay? And that for us, the, an important question is not only whether the district operates on the messages, but how can we explain this like large, large variation? Okay. Uh, so, so what m might be what might be the reasons that we see uh, uh, differential uptake? Okay. So we can think of, of of factors that operate at the village level. We can think of factors that operate at the individual level, and we can think also about the importance of of social ties. So at the village level, we can think about characteristics of the village, like the level of diversity in the village. So we have a big literature in political science that show that people, that villages that have a high level of diversity have a harder time to coordinate around uh, uh, public goods. It might be the, dist the distance to the district headquarters. It might be just something very mundane like the quality of the signal. At the individual level, okay, we can think of things like people's socioeconomic status. There's a big literature in political science that shows that that's really important for levels of participation, like income, age, education. Uh, but there could be also something about poor sociality. Some people don't care about like the common good, and some people care a lot about common good. And so, so that could be important. We also measure that in, in, in our survey uh, uh, to see whether this is also something that can affect your willingness to take action to benefit the, the community. But there could be also another factor, which is social influence, OK? The fact that my willingness or my decision to adopt a, path, a platform like an ICT platform for political communication to communicate problems to the district might be affected by uh, my ties to other people in the district, in the, sorry, in the village. So it could be just because of knowledge, OK? So it might be that the reason th that social ties matter is because uh, the fact that my friend adopt makes me more aware about the service so I'm more likely to adopt. So this is just about kind of knowledge and of uh, uh, this is a very basic form of contagion. But there might be also other reasons. Uh, so we can think about like different externalities that are very interesting in the context of this specific platform or this specific ICT uh, uh, product. And that's the fact that my decision to send might be a function of what I think other people are doing with this, with this platform. So we can think about positive externalities and negative externalities. So a positive externality could be that knowing that other people are sending increases the likelihood that I will send because I think that only if a lot of us are sending a message, someone at the district will, will operate on it. So if I think that only one person is complaining about the feature, no one will do anything. But if all of us are complaining about the feature, we will see uh, that more people, that the district will, 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 will feel the pressure to discipline that feature, okay? So here, knowledge that other people are using the system might increase my usage of the system. But we can think about a different, uh, 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 a different type of, uh, of a feedback effect or a different type of externality in which knowing that other people are using the system reduces the likelihood that I use the system because of just a basic collective action problem. If, if I think that it's enough that, uh, if, if I know that Roman is using the, the system to complain about a broken bridge, why should I use it, okay? So here, knowledge of the system by other people will reduce the likelihood that I send, okay? So these are, these are types of, these are ways in which uh, uh, my social ties can affect my, uh, my adoption, okay? Uh, so just before we go into like data, some basic definition that people, for people that don't uh, 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 study social ties and networks, just really basic definitions, I'm gonna go over it very, very, uh, uh, very fast. Uh, uh, we're going to be looking at uh, when I'll be talking about a neighbor. We'll, I'm talking about uh, someone who's connected to a person. So person A and person B. If there's a tie between them, we will consider them uh, neighbors. Seeds will be people that came to the initial meeting, so they have like uh, initial knowledge of the program. Okay, so these will be uh, seeds. Um, elite will be people that hold official leadership position in, in the village. We're going to be looking at the difference between. Uh, elites and non-elites. Uh, isolate is a person that has no neighbors. Degree is the number of connections a person has. Density is the proportion of potential connections uh, that are actually uh, connected. And we're going to also look at, uh, at uh, clustering, which, which basically captures the idea of the extent to which friends of mine are also friends with each other. So this is just like basic, uh, 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 basic uh, uh, definitions. 
in terms of what we know about like past studies of like why network matters, so we know uh, uh, most of the work in developing countries or on social ties look at agriculture products, for example, the adoption of fer uh, 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 pesticides and herbicides, okay? And, and here, there's, there's the literature is kind of all over, but there's like two things that come across as, as, uh, as uh, two big findings, especially in agriculture and in financial services. One is the importance of density, and one is the importance of adoption by central figures, okay? So density, uh, the, the, the denser the, the, the network of, the, say, the village, uh, the more we will see uh, that people adopt. There's more ties between people, so more people adopt. And when central people in the network, central nodes in the network adopt uh, a technology, uh, more, more people will be likely to adopt. What's interesting about the, the, the uh, ICT for po political communication, it's a, very, uh, it's a very interesting product that might not necessarily follow these... Uh, these like uh, uh, diffusion, uh, common diffusion mechanism. And, and the reason is, uh, you know, this goes back to some of the things I said before. Uh, so one, uh, we still have these like collective action problems. So unlike herbicide and pesticides, if my neighbor has, is starting to apply uh, fertilizers and his yields are growing, there's no collective action problem. If his yields are growing, I want to have that as well. And, and my usage doesn't take away from from his usage and his usage doesn't, there's no strategic interaction. But there is a strategic interaction in the product that we are involved with. Like the fact that other people are using might cause me to reduce my, the likelihood that I use if there's a free riding problem. Um, you know, so, so that's, that's one thing wh where like density might work against us, okay? Uh, uh, so that's one, one thing. The second thing is that central nodes, uh, the fact that they adopt in all the other studies it's clear that, that, that that's important in facilitating uh, diffusion, okay? Where central people in the network adopt, more people will adopt. Here, it's not that clear. So it might be, and, and there could be two reasons. One reason, it could be just a coordination issue, okay? So the, the, the leader of the village might hold a community meeting and say, hey, don't you all send messages? No one will care about like you and you and you and you. All, Come if you have a problem, come to me. I will send a message on your behalf, okay? So it, that, that, that might be one way in which uh, adoption of a central node might reduce the likelihood of other people to adopt. But there, another, another mechanism could be just, be just that people internalize that by themselves. They say, you know, if I know my friend is adopting and sending messages about the teacher, I'm going to send as well. But if the leader of the village is sending, well, his voice carries a lot of weight, so I, I'm not going to send these messages, okay? So these types of... These types of dynamics that are relevant to political communication might not, might not be relevant to uh, things like adoption of financial services and, and, and uh, agricultural products, okay? So let's go into, into our, the specifics of our, our design. Uh, we went to 16 villages. Ah, okay, the, the, the study was in 100 villages, but, um, but uh, we couldn't collect uh, 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 net network data on, in all uh, in all, uh, uh, or do surveys in all 100 villages. So we focus on 16 villages in which we, uh, uh, we selected them such that eight of them are high performance and eight of them are low performance. And the way we selected the, the villages is we know the level of uptake, we regressed it on all the variables that we have at the village <coughs> level, okay? And then we look at the, at the residual and the, the highest performance is when the residual was high, large and positive. So the village is sending more messages from what we would predict given the characteristics of the village. And the low performance is when the residual are large and negative, meaning that the, the village is sending much fewer messages than what would predict given uh, the characteristics of the village. And then we went to these villages and for like three days, we basically surveyed every person in the village. We collected information about these individuals, but also about their ties with other people, okay? Uh, we collected uh, when we, we talk about ties, people, we, we looked at two uh, 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 undirected and two directed ties. We looked at family and friends. These are uh, directed uh, ties. And we looked at uh, whether you have a person in the village that can lend you a big sum of money if you have uh, a, a financial uh, uh, problem. And, and we also asked about whether uh, we asked people to name the five people. These were all naming up to five people, the five people that if there is a problem, in, for example, in service provision, a teacher that is abusing your child, who do you go to to help solve 
uh, that problem. What we have here is the distribution of, uh, we were they were able to give up to five names, okay? So almost everyone can give five people in the village uh, outside their household that they're family members. Um, a lot can give up to five people in terms of, that are friends. There's less that can give five people uh, uh, in terms of uh, lenders and, and problem solvers. What we did, we took these four different types and cre created uh, uh, a union of all these ties. And the results that I'm gonna show you uh, use the union of all ties. Uh, one, of the, one of the extension that we will do going forward is to try and run all the, um, all the empirical results on each tie uh, uh, separately. But what I'm gonna show you is just uh, the union of all ties. These are the union of all ties. These are the 16 villages that we have. These are the eight high performance. These are the eight low performance. And what we have here is the number uh, of, of nodes and, uh, and uh, the density of the network. Just in terms of characteristics of these villages, uh, so we, as I said, we have high eight, high, uh, sorry, eight low uh, uptake and, and eight uh, high uptake. Uh, there's not much difference in terms of village characteristics, okay? There's some, some differences, but not a lot of difference in terms of the uh, individual uh, characteristics of the people that we, we, we surveyed. Uh, I think we have something like 3,182 people in, in all these uh, villages. Okay, in terms of the model uh, of trying to understand uh, the, the relative importance of individual characteristics, social ties, and, net and village characteristics, we, we run a, a, a very basic uh, regression where we look at two outcomes. One, first, whether you heard about the platform, and then whether you adopt the platform as a function of whether you uh, uh, heard of it. So, so this is not defined for people <laughs> that didn't hear. So conditional on, on hearing, did you decide uh, to adopt? And we, we throw into our regression three types of variables, individual characteristics, we have network uh, ties, and we're gonna have also village fixed effects to capture all the aspects of the village uh, that are not, uh, that can, can explain uh, variation in adoption. We're gonna look at both simple and complex contagion Simple contagion looks at just the number of people that are my neighbors that adopt, the number of people in my network that adopt. Uh, the complex contagion is about the percentage of people in my network that adopt. The results are very similar. Uh, the, the, uh, the simple contagion just operates. Uh, it, it's just, it's just uh, 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 the, the, the simple contagion uh, fits the data slightly better. So the results that I'm showing from simple contagion. Yes, Jake. Okay. Uh, this is uh, about a year and a half after we implemented. What's that? This is a year after the uh, initiation of the project. We go to these villages, collect data on all the individuals in these 16 villages, and we ask them a question. We ask them a bunch of questions about the individual characteristics. We ask them also, hey, have you heard about the platform? Uh, we have, in terms of like whether they adopted the flat the platform, we can treat it either as binary, like yes, I sent a message, or not. But we can also look at continuous, which is the number of messages that people sent. Okay, we, w the the results that I'll show will be on the on the extensive margin, not on the intensive margin. Okay, just whether people adopted or not. The, the results are not very different if we look at the intensive margin. Okay, uh, okay. So let's just look at like basic uh, results. Um, so in terms of like the number of adopters, uh, there's not a whole lot of adopters in the, in the, uh, uh, the so the, the red is the low uptake, the, the blue is the high uptake. I think that's around 2%. This is around 7%. Uh, just also to, to, be, to, be, to, to put these things in, in, in context, it is not clear what, is, what it takes to improve service provision in terms of uptake. So the comparison should not be voting where we want 80% or 60% of the people, 70% of the people to vote. It's not clear how many people need to complain about the teacher for this teacher to discipline. It might be that one is enough. It's not clear how many people need to text about a borehole that is broken. It might be the two, three is enough, okay? So, so, uh, so the fact that these are small numbers don't necessarily suggest that, uh, that that these uh, platforms are, are meaningless, okay? So we have about 7%. In terms of people that heard about it, so there's about 40% uh, 
of the people heard about it in the high uptake and, and uh, about 22% in the, in the low uptake and uh, levels of satisfaction are also high among those that adopted. So we asked people that adopted whether they're satisfied uh, with the project, uh, with, the, with the product on a scale to, uh, on a five point scale, we then dichotomize it for those that say I'm, I'm satisfied or very satisfied. We see that about 40% uh, of the people in, uh, uh, in the high uptake and around 22% in the low uptake say that they're satisfied. So level of satisfaction are not very high. Yes. What's the satisfaction of conditional uptake? Yeah. Mm. On hearing, I think on hearing, no, Romy? No, it's on uptake. Um, conditional, conditional on adopting. Yeah. On adopting. Okay, so uh, I'm, I'm going to show you some, some, some regression uh, results. I want you to focus on, on three types of, of, of questions that we want to be able to answer with this exercise, okay? The first is like to, to think about the type of adopters. Um, are these, is that a platform that enables people that are usually not participating, the more marginalized people in the community, the women, the poor, is that enable them to participate in a way that they couldn't given other forms of, of um, you know, the, the status quo, which is usually to travel to the district and make a complaint. So is that bringing new people into the, the fold? Um, we want to understand the scale and nature of the social diffusion. Uh, as I said before, the, we're looking at the peer effects, you know, what happens when I know that other people are using, uh, and, and it's good to separate uh, these people that are my peers as compared to the, the, the leaders in the village. It might be a different feedback mechanism. Uh, and, and another thing is like thinking about this form of political communication, so this ICT for political communication, <laughs> does it substitute uh, the existing forms of com co communication with, with, uh, with the district official or, or complements them? So we're gonna try to get some purchase also on that question. Okay. So, so let's start. Okay, so what we have here first is a very base model. The model has only individual level characteristics. We have, as for social ties, there's only one variable, which is the uh, number of neighbors, so number of people that are ties that either hear or adopt. So this will be hearing, the, the red will be adoption. Um, and uh, all these models have also district fixed effects, okay? So I think this is a joke. What's that? Well, I think this is a yeah. joke. Why would I be the tie the social network? Just like the graphic? No, so, so the social network was we, we had we went to these villages, sorry, maybe I went too, too fast. So we went to these 16 villages and we did a complete listing of the village with the, with the village uh, uh, heads. Sorry, I should have been much clearer about that. And then we went, we stayed three days in a village with like, so this when I say we is like enumerated, and we went person, person in the village, interviewed them uh, on the personal, you know, some personal characteristics, so, the level of education, the, the income, uh, whether they were born in the village or not. But we also asked them to name up to five people that are, it could be, so we had four types of network. Family, best friends, people that they can go to lend money, and people that they can go to to solve problems, okay? And if I am interviewed and I name you, Okay, I name Leonard as someone who can solve my problem. We have a tie, okay? And if, so that's, because that's, that's unidirectional, okay? In terms of family, in order for us to be family, I need to name Leonard and Leonard needs to uh, name me and this will be a tie, okay? And we take that and we can create a complete mapping of the entire village, okay? So maybe, sorry that I run a bit too fast. So, so family and friends, okay? So we are friends if I name you and you name me, okay? And we are family if we both name each other, okay? In terms of lender and problem solver, it, 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 it doesn't have to be, uh, it, it could be uh, one direction. If I name Jake as the per, per, per person that is willing to give me money, if I have a big problem, he doesn't need to give, he doesn't need to name necessarily me to say that we have a tie. And then we take all the ties and we create a map of all the ties between people. Okay, so, so people that do network stuff, uh, most, of, most of the studies are simulated. Some study use real networks and the, 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 the mode in terms of the number of networks that they have is uh, less than two. 
Okay, this is a unique study in the fact that we have 16 networks. Okay, that's, that's pretty unique because it's really costly and really difficult to collect, uh, uh, um, to go to a place and like map all of the ties of people, okay? It's labor intensive, okay? Um, so sorry that I wasn't clear uh, uh, about that, okay? So, uh, so I know whether we are connected, but I also do a survey with people and I know <coughs> whether you adopted the platform, because we ask people whether they heard about the platform and whether they adopted the platform, okay? So I know if we are connected and you adopted the platform, I know that I am connected to someone who adopted the platform, okay? So I know for each person whether they adopted, whether they heard, and how many people in their ties have also heard about the, the platform, have also adopted the platform, okay? Sorry that I wasn't like clear about that at that point, okay? So this, basically just captures, given the union of all ties, how many people in my network have ho heard, that's for the hearing uh, regression, and how many have adopted, that's for the adopting regression, okay? And, and we see that this is, the, the, the more people in my network, more people that I'm connected to, in my network meaning neighbors, the more neighbors that I have that adopt, the larger the likelihood that I will adopt, is the larger the likelihood that I will hear as well, okay? Interestingly enough, we see that social economic status doesn't play a big role in, in our study. We see that women slightly less, but not very significant. Elite are not more likely. Age is not playing role, and income is not playing role. Which, which, we have something here about education. That's like, uh, like that's the only one. So that's actually good news. Okay, so it's not just that the high socioeconomic people are the ones that are using the the the, the, the platform. Okay. Uh, Given the fact that we have one set, given the fact that we have individual characteristics, we have social ties, and the model also have fixed effects, what we can do is see which each of these factors, how does it contribute to my adoption, okay? So we had a question? Yeah, so you said that the hearing screen didn't, it doesn't look like it's going towards the left. Are they all, is the person in the middle? Like, do they, do they need a we actually, do, it doesn't matter. So we actually have also, there's a variable that captures the size of my network, my degree. It's not, uh, it's not very significant. Yeah, okay. No, it doesn't. We can add it, but it, it doesn't do much in terms of the, in terms of the model fit, yes. So we can, so we have, we collected uh, a, a stock of all public goods in the, in the village and we can add that. Uh, at this stage, it's only, it's captured for the, the village fixed effects, okay? So we can, we can take out of the village fixed and put like village level characteristics, but we, we don't do it in these basic regression. Uh, but if we, we can do that in, in uh, I, don't, I don't think, did you, did you try in Roman taking out uh, of the village characteristics out of the fixed effects, also things like um, the stock of public good. Okay, but we can we can we can look at that. That's a, that's a good. One. Okay, so I want to go back to, given the fact that we have these individual uh, characteristics, we have the ties, and we have also village fixed effects. We can see how each of them contributes to the probability that I adopt this technology uh, across these sixteen villages. What we have is the, the dots are the real value, that's the, that's the realized uh, level of adoption. So uh, the share of people in the village that will adopt. And the, the bars gives us what we have here. These are, uh, these are predicted values from our model. Okay, so we first we can see that our model is pretty accurate. So the, the, for, for most of the villages, the, the difference between the predicted values and the, the, the dots uh, is pretty good. But what's striking about this this, um, um, this figure is that we see that village characteristics, at least as, uh, as they're captured by these fixed effects, are not doing much. The individual characteristics are not doing much in separating uh, between villages. A lot of what's going on is, is coming from, from the network effect. And, and the network here, this is basically one, one coefficient. Okay? So the network ties are doing quite a lot in terms of like increasing the likelihood that people will adopt, okay? So that's interesting, okay? Uh, what we can do is try to go a bit deeper to try and understand what is it about 
What is it about the, these network ties that uh, cause people to, to adopt? Uh, and that's what we're going to do in the, in, the, in, the, in the next analysis where we do, what's that? No, so uh, so we, we have a bit of that. Um, we have also a level of political participation. Uh, so yeah, so we have uh, we have this. It's interesting. The core sociality. We played uh, dictator games with them. Uh, we played uh, uh, public goods experiments with them. So we can ap create like a, a nice measure of how, how much people care about other people's utility. That captures a bit the things that you've discussed. Um, um, but in terms of the ties, we treated it as a complete network, meaning, the, yeah. so the complete network, you need to have very clear definition of inclusion and exclusion. And we, our membership was basically the village, okay? Because you, you have to set, in complete networks, you have to set boundaries. And the boundaries we set is the, is the village. But your, your point is, is well taken. Uh, so what we did is we went a bit deeper, okay? We went a bit deeper uh, to try and understand the, the, what is it about the ties that, uh, that matter. Uh, so we also asked people that said that they heard about it. We asked, hey, did anyone, how did you hear about it? And some people said, well, somebody told me about it. So we asked, hey, who's the person that told you about it, okay? So we know, and because we had the complete listing, we're able to know exactly who was the person that told you about it. Uh, most of the time, this was a person from the network, but not all of the time. And we also have information on these people, whether they are satisfied or not, okay? So we can look at the effect. We can kind of try to disentangle what part of it is just having someone that is connected to me that adopts versus someone that speaks to me and versus someone that speaks to me and is also satisfied with the product, okay? So we can try to kind of disentangle uh, these and that's what we do in this set of, uh, of set of regressions when we, we take things like persons that uh, spoke to me and whether they were satisfied and try to kind of um, use that as to predict people's uh, uh, level of adoption what we have is something like the following so uh, in the base model in the base model that's the purple if I have no ties that will be my rate of adoption around like uh, like one and a half percent and then we start adding things so this will be just someone, uh, so this is one of my neighbor adopts, okay? One of my neighbor adopts, and this person didn't talk to me. Is uh, it, it's just in my network, and she adopts, okay? This adds, they spoke to me about it. And this adds, and they were happy about the, the product. They were satisfied, okay? Now, uh, I will just say that uh, uh, as we move uh, from the, the basic contagion to communication. So they talk to me about it. There's fewer people. People that are satisfied is fewer people. So we have re relatively large co confidence intervals. It's not, uh, you know, um, these are just point estimates, but it gives a sense of the fact that it's not just about having people that are adopted that I know, but there's something about also the communication between us and, uh, and, and the importance of them being happy about it. Um, two other things that I want to, before, before I, uh, I, I start wrapping up, I want to leave some, some time to question, a few things that I want to highlight. The first thing is whether this whole platform, does that substitute for other forms of participation or complements? So we asked people whether the, the, the number of times they spoke to a gov district official in the last six months, and we see that this is positive and significant, meaning that this is not substituting probably to other forms it suggests that this is complementary, okay? It's also, if we look at the fact that the, more the, the people that have higher levels of political participation are more likely to adopt, it's kind of consistent with the fact that, uh, uh, that this is not coming in at the expense of other forms of participation, but kind of adds to them. Another thing is like, we, we, were, we were very interested in understanding uh, the, the, the externality question, the feedback effect. What happens when I know that peers are adopting? What happens when I know that elites are adopting? So with peers, we know that there's a, there's a, there's a complementarity. The more I know that my peers are adopting, when I say peers are like the ordinary villagers uh, in my village that I'm connected to, 
the more they adopt, the more I'm likely to adopt. So we need to think about these messages as compliments. We believe that more of us are sending messages, there's a greater chance that we will be, uh, res <laughs> that the government will be responsive. On the other hand, the dynamic with elites might be a bit different. So if an elite, and here an elite is someone who has official uh, leadership position in the village, and uh, uh, if they adopt, I'm less likely, less likely to adopt. I, I would say that this is, this, this is less robust finding, but suggests that the thinking about uh, elites adopting and, and peer adopting might, might have different diffusion mechanisms. Um, uh, one last thing, uh, we wanted to know how much coordination might be a problem in our estimation. It might be that there's like these like high status people that are just coordinating everyone. Come to me, I will send messages to you. We don't think that this is, the, uh, the, that this is, this is really happening uh, to a large extent because if we look at the number of messages that are sent, and uh, the proportion of adopters, we see like this like strong. So more pe it's not as if we have places where uh, a lot of messages are coming out of one person. More messages are co correlated <laughs> with more adopters. And, uh, and another way of gauging into this coordination is asking people, did you go to someone else and ask him to send a message? Or did people come to you and ask you to send message on their behalf? Because we wanted to know whether this, also, this is another form of coordination. And we wanted to, to, to get a sense of how much uh, this is happening. And, and we can see that that's not happening a lot. The number of times that someone uh, borrowed or lent a phone is, is, is relatively small compared to the total number of messages that a person uh, uh, will send. What's that? They, they are communicating it. They just don't go to you and ask you to use their phone to send messages. Um, the number of times somebody will ask me to ah. lend him the phone, okay? But not, not actually to send, to send the so that, that we get here. Oh. That we get here. The number of people that told me about the system and the number of people that were satisfied that were told me. That's the communication aspect, oh. okay? This is just to know the extent to which, you know, our result might be biased because I go to you and ask you to send a phone, a, a message on my behalf. So, so, so that can create some biases if that's, if, if that's happening a lot, but we're not seeing that that's happening uh, a lot. Just in terms of next steps, uh, we, what I presented now are a bunch of correlations. It's the, it not necessarily it's a causal story because if uh, me and Nick, are, 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 we have ties and both of us are adopting, it might be because, it might be that we are both adopting because we have a tie and that's a causal story. Or there might be some homophily story. The, the, we are connected because we share some characteristics. And these types of characteristics are more likely to adopt. And the f but we're also more likely to be connected. So what we're thinking as like the, 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 the effect of social time might just be homophily going on. So, so we want to go into a bit more into the, the causality story. So we're collecting now information on exactly what the meeting places to uh, place. And then we'll be able to calculate for each individual the distance to the meeting place and maybe use that in, in, as an instrument to get some exogenous variation. That's something that we're planning to do. We might be doing some simulation to get into the village level uh, characteristics that might matter. So, so taking different like villages and their network and changing uh, village level characteristics one at a time to see how this might affect uh, the rate of adoption. Uh, and maybe do some deeper investigation of the, these externalities. Like uh, these peer effects, um, I, I think there's more uh, work needs to be done. So let me just conclude and, and open things to the floor. Uh, basically, what we did in this study, we looked at, at uh, implementation of a, a, a ICT platform for political communication, allowing citizens to make complaints about service delivery deficiencies. We see a large variation in them, and we want to understand why. We see that social networks or social ties are important in explaining some of the variations both between individuals and between villages. They're playing a large, uh, an important role, more than individual characteristics. Uh, there's some, some reasons to think that the way that social ties matter in this type of contagion of political communication, uh, uh, ICT platform, might be different from the way we think about agriculture products or financial services. Um, we, we find this interesting thing that if, if, if I'm connected to an elite, I'm less likely to adopt that suggests that there might be, um, either it, it might be a free riding story, 
It might be an efficacy story. I just don't adopt it because I, I, I think that this person is more efficacious. It might be a coordination story. We, we, we think we need to go a bit deeper in understanding that, but that's a very interesting dynamic. Um, we find that traditionally politically marginalized individuals are slightly less likely to adopt, but not, not, not a lot. And, that's, that's, uh, uh, and again, we, we need to look a, a bit more into that. But, but that's very important to understand whether this is a system that only privileges the already privileged or flattens access uh, to political elite. Um, and we have some evidence that this is not merely expressive, that people are thinking a bit strategically about it. So in the sense that uh, knowledge of other people are using are making me more likely to use. So this is not just about expressive. We actually want to get some, some things done. Okay? And let me stop here and open, uh, open to a